Welcome to this tutorial about function libraries and macro libraries. So let's just jump in and check them out. So here we are inside of Unreal Engine 4.26 if you want to follow along. And um, a little bit about function libraries and macro libraries then. Um, a general rule of thumb when it comes to programming is if you're doing something twice, then you're probably doing it wrong. Uh, this doesn't apply to everything always, but as a general thing, if you feel that you're doing something duplicated, then most likely you're doing something in a way that can be made more efficient. And one of the solutions for that in some cases are macro libraries and function libraries. So that's why we're going to be checking them out today. So that everybody is uh, on along for the ride, uh, let's just talk a little bit about um, functions. So a function is a bit of code that you have encapsulated for reusability. So if we were to make a function and we called it uh, do math stuff, um, then this is the entry point of our function and we can call it somewhere else and uh, get this function to run. Uh, each function has a return node. Uh, Regardless if you're putting one of these in or not, it's always going to be returned when it reaches the end of an execution. Uh, it's good habits to have a return node. Um, and a function, how that differs from a normal event, is that a function has the ability to return an output. So we could say that uh, math stuff was done and have that as a boolean. And we can have a different one that says like results uh, like so and then make that a float or something like that so this is how like a, a return a set of return variables could look so if we were to call uh, do math that's not what we wanted to do do math stuff like so now you see that this is a a function so if we were to have a execution pin to this it would go in here it would say uh, who should this be executing for and then you can see that we get our uh, out variables here now uh, if you end up in a situation where you have to do something duplicated within a hierarchy of um, inheritance then you might realize well okay I just need to make sure that this uh, function exists in the base class that every other class is uh, inheriting from of course um, but if you happen to end up in a situation where you have something that feels like a utility function so like math for example let's say that you do some math mathematical calculation for something maybe um, how to calculate damage or something uh, then that would be sort of a utility function that would possibly be available to both maybe a character and also for a monster NPC or something of that nature. So what you can do then is you can make sure that you have this function available in a function library, which means it's easy to reach for all other blueprints in your project. So to create one, you just go to blueprints and you have blueprint function library here and i'm actually not entirely sure about what the naming convention for this is uh, but blueprint function library bpfl could be something uh, because it has all the words in it so maybe that makes sense and then we could call this math uh, library or something like that a little bit redundant with l and library there but you get the point um, you don't have to follow the naming convention I just suggested here. You can have something else, of course. But as always, it's good to have a naming convention and also to follow it as best as you can because it will make it easier to identify different objects in your project when you're working on it and it starts to grow a little bit in size. Going into a, a Blueprint function library, this is what you're going to be approached with. And it looks similar to uh, most Blueprints. You can see here you have a bunch of functions here. So if we were to create a new function and say um, function library math stuff like so and then we'll make a return node for this as well 
and we'll make sure it has an output and we'll call it new param just because and like so so that one returns an integer and uh, that's called new param actually let's make a good name uh, integer result I'm telling you to not to be lazy, so I shouldn't be lazy either when it comes to these things. So we have an integer result that comes back from calling this uh, function. Now in this specific function, obviously you can see we don't actually have any logic, but this is just representing to see for you that this is how it works. Uh, going back to our third person character now, we can actually do something like, uh, what did we call it? Uh, function library math stuff. So you see here, we, we get a a result of um, groupings for BPFL math library and we can see all the functions that are available in this library. The, this one down here was the one that was created automatically to begin with. Um, but yeah, so here we can call it and you can see we can call it inside of this function also if we wanted to. So that's uh, how you expose it and make it available for different types of objects and make it uh, a utility function basically. Uh, and this is the function that I was talking about that was appearing in the search result. So that's how function libraries work. It's a very good way for you to put something that uh, needs to be done uh, by a lot of different actors or components um, to make sure that you don't, you're not duplicating code all over the place and making sure that if you, if you were to have that situation where you had it duplicated in many places and you make a change to that logic and forgot one of those places, then you would get a problem because it's not um, behaving in the same way in all the different calls. Having it in one specific place makes sure that when you make a change to it, it affects everyone or everything. So going back to macro libraries then. A macro library is similar, although a little bit different. If we go into, for example, the third person character again, and we go to our event graph. Now, uh, there are a couple of ways how you can make a macro. You can, uh, apparently I've already started creating one here. You just go here and click macro and you can just say, um, let's call this macro to find closest uh, objects. Now this looks similar, although different from a function, right? It has inputs and outputs, sort of like the, the start and the returns. Uh, and you can see inputs and outputs over here. Uh, the difference is that you have a little bit more um, execution um, abilities when it comes to uh, macros. So for example, if you were to have an input first here and we call this one uh, let's call it, you see you have, we have a pin here that says exec. This means that it will come as an execution pin in here. So you can have execution pins in and out. So if we were to say like, uh, uh, let's see, if we call it exec, is that, uh, I need to remember now here, which is it? Uh, I'm having trouble remembering. There is a way to make sure that a, uh, an execution pin like this doesn't have an actual uh, name next to it, so it's blank. I don't remember how, but I'll make sure to try and figure that out and put it in the comments of the video below, uh, if that's of interest. But anyway, uh, what you can do is, for example, in this you can do something like, you know, execution inputs, you can have other inputs, like you can have a boolean. Let's say this is a check value. And then inside of this, this we can have a, a branch, for example and we can have the boolean go in here and we can say that if it's true it should be going into one pin and then a false in another pin so you can basically i've made a super redundant if check here but this is the kind of thing you can do so when when someone something is calling on this macro so if we do this macro over here you can see that uh, we have the execution pin over here so we would connect it like so it would have a boolean value like so and then depending on what actually happens in this, an execution would either come out in this uh, slot or this pin. Um, so you can do cool things like that. So that's the, the basic of a macro. Uh, now a macro library is something similar to function libraries in this regard, because if we go to uh, blueprints and blueprint macro library, 
you get to pick a parent class to begin with. So in this case, let's say we pick a character and we call this blueprint macro library. So BPML and call this math, uh, math macro library. Library, so it's super uh, specific. Now, why did we pick a character? Well, um, running a macro requires you to have the same information available um, as the thing that is running uh, the macro. So uh, for a function, for example, you, you define which inputs are available and which outputs or not, you did, did, did disable, sorry. You, you decide which inputs come in in the form of variables and which variables come out. But for a macro library, this could be different depending on what type of uh, class that you're actually using. So if you find a class that has the best descriptive parent class, basically, meaning that if we create a macro library for a parent class character and we call this uh, macro tests like so and we just make sure that we have some input some output we make it an execution over there and there like so we call this one input call this one output like so and we go back to third person character and our third person character is of the type of character so we, what did I call it? I called it uh, macro test. So if we type in macro test. You can see that it appears here and we have this available and we can run it like so. Oops. Like so if we wanted to. But if we were to make a new class, uh, let's see here, where did we create our things? Where did I create the macro libraries? Okay. Fine. Add a PML in there. And let's go to uh, where is the find show in explorer? That's the wrong one as well. Show in folder view. There. So now we are where where our math library for the function and for the macros. If we were to make another class now, a blueprint class that is of the type actor instead of character, we'll call this BP actor. And we go in here and we go into the event graph of this and we type in macro test. You see that the macro test does not appear. And that is because this macro test uh, macro is available for characters, not for actors. So that's a limitation for them. Um, let's go back to this a little bit quickly. Um, there is uh, also other ways to create macros uh, in case you were not aware. Uh, you can do some, something like you can just like mark the stuff that you want to have and you can create functions like this as well. Uh, you right click on something and you say collapse nodes, collapse the function, collapse the macro. And doing this uh, will create a macro where where it tries to uh, encapsulate all of the things that you have marked and give it inputs and outputs nodes that correspond to what it's actually understanding. You might have to edit this because it doesn't work 100% of the time, but it's a quick way to do to take some existing code that you have and uh, create a macro out of it. Similarly, for function, you can do the same thing. And collapsing nodes is basically just uh, grouping them together so they look a little bit neater and then it doesn't take that much space and you can name it something useful. And if you decide that you don't want to have it like that anymore, you can always expand the node. Um, similarly, you can do collapse macro like this. You see, you get a macro like so, and then you can expand the node as well. <coughs> so it works the same way. Um, but yeah, so to reflect on what we have done here then, um, we can create function libraries where we can put uh, functions that we want to use from multiple different points of code. 
and we can also group them by having function libraries for certain aspects like one for math and one for uh, vectors and uh, one for damage or whatever you want to have as a grouping um, and then they are available for different types of um, actors components and general blueprints making sure that you have one specific spot and don't duplicate your code allowing you for usability reusability and the same way so we have macro libraries which are uh, flexible in in certain aspects in the form of that they can give us multiple execution pins and things like that uh, and limiting in other factors like that they have to belong to a parent class which uh, limits who can actually call on them to begin with um, but generally uh, both of these are very useful to make sure that you can uh, put code that you would normally have to duplicate otherwise in one place so you don't have to. I hope that makes sense to you and that that helps you out. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video leave a like, if you did not like it leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments you might have down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like this in the future. That is all for now, keep on learning, take care.